I remember seeing a poster of this game when it first came out, and being unable to read at the time, thinking it was a Zelda game. While it is similar to the Zelda franchise in some aspects, Dark Cloud has its own identity to go by. Let's have a look, shall we? The story is about a young boy named... Toen? To... On... Tone? Toen? To... To... Uh, to, to... The story is about a young boy named Phil, who lives in a village called No Room. One evening during a festival, a monster known as the Dark Genie attacks No Room. Phil, in an attempt to save a friend of his, passes out and is awoken by a strange man who calls himself the Fairy King. The Fairy King tells Phil that the Dark Genie has attacked not only No Rune, but half of the entire world. He goes on to say that just before all the people, buildings, and plants were destroyed, he managed to seal them inside floating orbs called Atla that, unfortunately, were scattered during the chaos. The Fairy King then gives Phil a stone called the Atla Milia, which can open the Atla, absorb whatever was sealed inside, and place it back at its respective location. So now the task of rebuilding the world has been entrusted to a 12-year-old! There is a lot of variety in the gameplay. In order to rebuild whatever area you're in, you'll have to head into a dungeon where you'll have to fight monsters and collect buildings and people from the Atla. Each dungeon is divided into several floors with a boss fight at the very bottom floor. In order to access a new floor, you'll have to find a certain object or key that will allow you to progress. These keys are always dropped by enemies, so keep hacking away at them until you find it. One problem I found with the dungeons is that there isn't much variety in each individual floor, as they're all just a big maze with enemies and a few minor puzzles in them. This isn't a big deal in some of the more detailed environments, like the forest area, but in places like the Divine Beast Cave, the first dungeon in the game, I found myself getting sick of it pretty fast. I found the combat quite similar to a Zelda game. When you fight an enemy, you can target them with the circle button, attack them with the X button, and block with the R1 button. This is not only fun, but worked pretty well in my opinion. Every once in a while, you'll come across a strong enemy or group of enemies that you'll have to duel in order to proceed. Duels are basically interactive cutscenes. To win the duel, you simply have to press the correct buttons at the right times. The only problem is, I find myself so focused on pressing the on-screen buttons that I don't pay attention to the cutscenes. Oh well, I'm sure whoever's watching you will enjoy it. As you attack enemies, your weapon will take damage and eventually break. And when it breaks, it's gone for good. To prevent this, you have to pause the game and use repair powder from your inventory to restore your weapon's durability. Making it possible to have your weapons be destroyed is an okay idea, but at the end of the day, constantly having to stop whatever it is you're doing to repair your weapon is just a pain in the butt and some enemies will just eat away at your weapon's durability. You can upgrade any weapon you have using materials you find in dungeons or buy in stores. The upgrade system in this game is the most detailed I have ever seen. You can upgrade your weapon's attack, durability, elemental power, and even how effective it is against certain types of enemies. But don't break your weapon or all of your hard work will get flushed down the toilet. When inside a dungeon, you have a thirst meter which will slowly deplete. If it runs out, your health will start to deteriorate. To restore your thirst meter, you'll have to drink water, though unlike repair powder, you can equip water to a hot bar which will allow you to drink it without pausing the game. There's also springs located on certain floors in each dungeon which replenish not only your thirst, but your health as well. But be careful, they aren't on every floor. As mentioned earlier, you'll collect the missing pieces of the world contained within the Atla while traversing each dungeon. Once found, you can place each structure back into the world. But here's the catch. You get to decide where to put it. Houses, trees, rivers, it's up to you to decide how you want each town to be arranged. I loved this aspect of the game. Being able to arrange everything to my liking? Yes, please. As you travel, you'll meet some quirky characters who will decide to help you on your quest. Each character has their own special ability, which you'll need to get past certain obstacles, and their own special weapon. This helps create some variety in combat, and helps you deal with certain enemies. Unfortunately, with more weapons comes even more durability bars, which means more pausing the game to fix them. It can also get rather tedious to constantly have to switch between your allies, especially in the later parts of the game where you have a total of six playable characters. The bosses were pretty well done. Mostly. 
They range from hard to challenging to pathetically easy. The hard ones were, well, hard, and the challenging and easy bosses were more of a matter of figuring out how to kill them. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any footage of the challenging fights, so instead you get to watch me get killed by the first boss. If you own a PS2, you should definitely give Dark Cloud a try. It's a long adventure filled with great combat, a detailed weapon system, the ability to recreate the world, and beautiful environments. Usually. Its only issues are that it can get annoying to have to babysit your weapon's damage meter, switching between allies was very tedious, the camera could become a bit of a pain sometimes, and some of the dungeons look kind of dull after a while. But thankfully, the good far outweighs the bad, giving this game an 8 out of 10.